relationship and somebody pipes up at the table, well, what you ought to do is sleep with him first before you get married. That would be the way to handle this. By what basis or foundation are you making that claim? Why is that what they ought or should do? Notice they won't have a reason for it. It's just how the world has ingrained their thinking to respond. Notice it's not based on an absolute truth or standard. It's based on an opinion. And opinions don't carry much weight, do they? They really don't. No one was ever won to Christ by opinion. So, last thing. Avoid Christianese. We love using Christianese with, with people. And sometimes they will get all mixed up. Today's people have little church background. Justification, sanctification, regeneration, propitiation. They'll say, what? Are you one of those speaking in tongues people? Is that what's going on? <laughs> no. If you choose to use these terms, define them for them. When I say justification, here's what I'm talking about so that you understand this. If not, find other ways to communicate the same process. Because when you believe in Christ, you are now seen as completely righteous in the eyes of God because of what Jesus has done for you. You see what I'm saying? That's a means of using the definition to speak about justification so that you can communicate to somebody who's just not ready for that, that kind of verbiage. Any questions? I hope these encourage you with some creative methods to go about reaching people. A lot of times the only thing that keeps people from reaching the lost is willingness. Am I willing to take the time? Am I willing to get involved? Am I willing to put my money forward? Am I willing to give of myself to this? But I guarantee you this. Here's the thing, man. I like football a whole lot. And when we go to the YCC, it's at noon. That's when all the football games are coming on. But here's a question i got to ask myself. Am I about football or am I about souls? Which one is infinitely more important? Which one is going to have a greater understanding in all of eternity? The only thing that keeps people from going to heaven is faith in Christ. And I guarantee you, when they have the message spelled out as simply as the Gospel of John does repeatedly, lights start to come on. Eyes start to light up. What? That's too easy. Do you want me to make it harder for you? Jesus didn't seem to want to make it harder for people. What you're teaching is cheap grace. It's not cheap grace. It costs God his son. Nothing cheap about that. But here's one thing I can guarantee you. It's free to you. That's what a gift is. If you want to pay something back, you've made that gift a transaction. That's not right. It is a free gift to you. Any questions at all? Is too much. God would never accept it. And that's and that's why people are that's why people need to hear about the grace of God. That's what grace is. It's unmerited favor, yes, but it's also someone getting the exact opposite of what they deserve. But in, in God's eyes, is one sin worse than another? The thing that seems to claim in Scripture from 1 Corinthians six would be that sexual sin uh, is, is a is a defilement of the body uh, in such a way that other sins are not. But as far as does any one merit the fact that they are going to hell more than another? No. No. All sin is sin. All sin leads to death. All sin will. All sin separates us from God. But but here's the thing. That's why grace is so great, and that's why when I, I take a lot of comfort in verses like justification in life has been made to all people, that He's the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the entire world. That tells me. That salvation is available to everybody. And I don't have to worry about if they were elected and predestined before the foundation of the world or whether or not they're going to go to heaven. That comes to nothing into play about justification whatsoever in the scriptures. What it is is having heard the word. Faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of Christ. If we're dispensing that to them, leaving the ball in their corner, let the Holy Spirit do the work that the Holy Spirit does however he does it. The first question I want to ask Jesus when I get to heaven is what in the world does John 3, 8 mean? Spirit goes where it will. You, you see the wind, it blows where it wills, and you see where it is, but you don't know where it comes from, so it's work with the Spirit. And I'm going, that clears up nothing. <laughs> but, just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I don't be obedient. I'll still go and give the message. 
Let the Holy Spirit move how He wants to move. It's an interesting thing. Remember this about evangelism. It's never about how many notches you put in your spiritual gun. It's not about that. It's about where you're faithful with the message. Let God do the work. Sound good? Let's pray. Please, take a break. Father, thank you for the clarity of the gospel. Thank you for the clarity of the scriptures. Uh, I pray, God, that we not cling to traditions or ways that we've always heard it, uh, but, Father, that we would wrestle with your word and that your spirit would add those things to our understanding and we'd be changed. And Father, that we would understand that there are great opportunities uh, of massive darkness, especially here uh, in Boise, but all over uh, to where the light of Christ needs to be displayed clearly. Um, Father, thank you for grace that reaches further than we probably thought was possible. Um, and the fact is, is that Jesus has offered that eternal life. It's so good. It, it, it really is good. Uh, I, I pray, Father, that here we all be uh, moved to want to be more active in sharing our faith with lost people. I pray in Christ's name, amen. amen. Thank you, guys. We've got a